Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind has opened at Epcot as one of the largest investments in the park's future and its first roller coaster. But it's more than just a coaster, it's a long, winding, spinning, fun filled adventure through the galaxy backed with extensive technology and great music. Today on Amusement Labs, we'll take an equally extensive look at the hidden engineering and technology behind Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. So click subscribe, grab a snack, and get comfortable, because this is how it works. This video was supported by Felix Bonteza, Brandon Wiggins, and viewers like you at patreon.com slash amusement labs. Enjoy early access and more by joining. In the late 1990s, Walt Disney World's Epcot Center was undergoing a massive renovation to revitalize the park from a center of edutainment attractions that struggled to draw guests to something a little bit more thrilling. During this time, Epcot lost attractions like World of Motion and the Dearly Missed Horizons in favor of larger, faster, and more exciting experiences like Test Track and Mission Space. One attraction that received a major overhaul was the fabled Universe of Energy, featuring a slow-moving journey back to the age of the dinosaurs and a series of short films that together lasted a whopping 45 minutes. It was certainly a very relaxing, long, slow-paced attraction. Jumping forward to 2014, Volume 1 of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise opened in theaters to great success as part of Disney's acquisition of Marvel Comics. From the outset, there was a solid fan base for movies featuring the likes of Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, and Dom Toretto, and more. Developed over the past decade, the early version of the ride did not integrate the Guardians of the Galaxy, but would still have a similar coaster theme to the Ding Dang, or I'm sorry, the Big Bang, or the Big Bang. However, later in development, the decision was made to leverage properties, and so the mostly media-based coaster received an IP integration. Synergy. The head of Parks and Resorts at the time believed this integration would help this over $500 million investment be more successful. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind sits within one of the largest show buildings at any Disney park and is currently the record holder for the longest indoor coaster. However, the ride actually occupies two buildings, with the queue, stations, and a small section of the ride located within the former Universe of Energy building, and the main ride portion taking place in a massive building out of view. Featuring over 9,260 cubic yards of concrete, the foundation of the new massive show building was poured over 17 hours before the building was raised and the coaster itself was built later within. Of course, due to 2020-related construction pauses, the ride's construction was delayed from March 2020 to mid-2021. While the entire ride is indoors, making it the longest indoor coaster, the ride relies heavily on screen-based media filmed on set of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. Coincidentally, Cosmic Rewind is located into the park's other space-themed ride, Mission Space, a forceful slingshot to Mars. You can check out how Mission Space works in the iCard above. Located within World Discovery, guests are welcomed into the first otherworldly pavilion, the Wonders of Xandar. Us Terrans are invited to see a demonstration of innovative teleportation technology and more. Entering into the Wonders of Xandar Pavilion, Terrans are greeted by the Galaxarium, a large planetarium mounted on the ceiling above. Featuring 30 minutes of real entertainment information, this planetarium dome show explains life on fictional Xandar. Created by Spitz Incorporated, this projected planetarium screen uses a high-resolution projector and a specialized lens to project onto the dome. As Terrans enter the gallery, several holograms flank the wall, talking more about life on Xandar. These hologram effects are an age-old system called a Persistence of Vision screen. These screens work by taking two single strips of LEDs mounted vertically on a disc and spinning them up rapidly. The LEDs are able to quickly flash, and with the motion of the rotating disc, the stream of light forms an image. This effect is not the first time Disney has utilized this in an attraction. The first notable use was in the Stormtrooper Blast on Rise of the Resistance, adding dimensionality to the ride. The most recent use is in the Holocron illusion used in part of the Galactic Star Cruiser to float Yoda above a prop. This persistence of vision system offers a near-perfect way to present guests with what is the closest thing to a hologram. 
Further into the gallery, we pass intricate museum-style models of locations on Xandar that utilize projections to add dimensionality to the model. Along the walls are more informational screens about Xandar, with little excerpts from Xandarian TV shows on 3D displays, achieved with a sheet of acrylic to project onto, and then behind them are additional screens such as a transparent OLED screen. After our journey through the queue, the plot of the ride begins to pick up, and we're invited into a holding room before we led into the second room. Above the doors is a 3D screen showing Glenn Close and Terry Crews, the host of our presentation. For those that don't know, LCD screens are actually transparent by default, only becoming opaque thanks to the backlight that shines through. In the background is an LED display spanning the length of the room, but forward this screen is a large transparent OLED screen. As we move forward into the main pre-show, we are welcomed into the teleportation chamber to be beamed up to a Nova Core ship for more demonstrations. Above our heads is the teleportation transmitter brought to life with illuminated features and a screen at the top in order to legitimize the effect. The teleporter powers up before the room goes dark for 2.5 seconds. When the lights return, we are seemingly up on the Nova Core ship. While this effect is convincing, it's actually fairly easy to figure out by simply just looking up. Much like the original ending to Poseidon's Fury, I Islands of Adventure, the walls that were around us at the start have simply lifted upward into the ceiling by steel cables on winch motors. We are now greeted by a projected view out into space. In the center of the scene is the cosmic generator, the MacGuffin of the ride. As the power surges, the generator disappears in just half a second. For this impressive effect, only half a generator is pressed onto a large flat mirror. The interior reflects off of the one-way mirrors that allow us to see into the enclosure but see nothing through the back. For the glowing core of the generator, a large screen is placed just behind the mirror, similar to the hologram effect on Rise of the Resistance. The tall enclosure is key to the effect by not only obscuring the view of guests, but also hiding the generator that is mounted on a post. When the power goes out, the lights inside the enclosure go out too, and the generator lowers rapidly into the podium. If we go frame by frame through the effect right here, we can see the diffraction of the screen by a bulbous surface that then continues to travel downward. This method avoids induced air resistance and mechanical issues involved with possibly rotating the mirror to a blank side as there's no large surface area. Of course, here we engineer curiosity, so I want to hear from you. How do you think it works? After Isan steals the cosmic generator, the Guardians of the Galaxy are called in to retrieve it, and then we are ushered off to the evacuation site, or the loading station. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is a custom coaster designed by Disney and contracted to be built by Vacoma Rides. The ride features six trains of five cars each that hold four riders per car. As riders enter, they will store their belongings and pull down on a dual hydraulic restraint to secure themselves. This restraint uses the flow of hydraulic fluid to secure the restraints by preventing the fluid from moving around. Located in between each seat is a speaker that provides audio spills, but more importantly, the six songs the ride features to accent your journey back to Terra. And of course, as we've learned recently, these songs can be switched out. The main feature of the car is of course the spinning that goes along with the experience. Dubbed the Omnicoaster, the name is an homage to the Omniweaver systems seen on rides like the Haunted Mansion, highlighting their ability to orient riders towards specific scenes. This controlled spin requires each car to be mounted on a rotational bearing with a large gear underneath and a motorized helical gear to match. When the cars rotate, an encoder tracks the position of the cars, while power is provided through a slip ring in the center. Below the spine, four wheel assemblies featuring two road wheels, two guide wheels, and two upstop wheels ensure a stable ride. To power everything, each car has batteries located under riders that charge the power rails, called pickup rails or bus bars, in the load station and unload station. Of course, one of the main features of Cosmic Rewind is the ride's use of launch sections in order to quickly get the ride going and control speeds. To launch riders, Cosmic Rewind does not use drive tires or a cable pull launch. Like other notable rides, it uses fins called LSMs or Linear Synchronous Motors. Each fin is called a stator and the collection of fins makes up the motor. 
For this explanation, I've created this model of a linear synchronous motor stator inspired by the design used on Cosmic Rewind and other rides. If you'd like, you can find a link to this model below and print one out for yourself. These linear motors use enameled wire and tight coils to run at very high current in a short period of time. This trio of high current carrying windings are connected in a star pattern to inverters located below the track. When each coil is given its own alternating current, they create a three-phase magnetic field pattern that passes from coil to coil through the wire and around an iron core inside the stator. These magnetic fields impart an attractive and repulsive forces to permanent magnets that are fixed to the spine of the train. In between the LSM stators are Hall effect sensors that detect the permanent magnets of the train, providing motion data. Using that data, the launch system sets the speed of the three-phase current for each stator so the magnetic field remains synced with the train as it accelerates. Because these LSMs pass very high currents through their coils, they tend to have a liquid cooling layer sandwiched between the halves of the coils. Heat transfer occurs via thermal conduction from the coils and iron core to the aluminum cooling layer that has high thermal conductivity and diffusivity properties. In order to create this much power to launch the train, the system uses generators connected to the supercapacitors which charge, hold, and dump power. When directed, the LSMs can each have access to kilowatts of power without causing a park-wide blackout. Aside from being a contactless launch system, the LSMs can also act as contactless brakes by acting against the movement of the train. However, Cosmic Rewind actually does use normal friction brakes towards the end of the ride. Putting everything together, we get a system capable of easily dumping power into the train and rocketing it up into the show building. Once the train leaves one of the two stations, it immediately climbs a lift tail using many drive tires that push on the bottom of the permanent magnets of the train used for the LSMs. Here, a number of screens are in use for a tunnel effect and the creation of a jump point. By this time, we are facing backwards and ready for the first launch. This scene is the best example of a motion parallax in the ride and takes into account the shifting view of all riders. Before the first launch, there are protocols in place that if the train ahead has not cleared the proper block section, it will stall for time before it's safe to launch the train. Throughout the ride, the trains must hit each interval of 22 seconds between each block. Here we can see a good example of a train stalling for time on the first lift tail, and here the train is stalling for time at the launch. When ready, the train is forced back and up a steep hill sailing into the main ride building, returning the cars to a forward-facing position. A massive screen hung from the ceiling sets the story in motion, combining another motion parallax to add dimension and a gray projection surface for deeper contrast. The train weaves through the building before running through another block break with a screen projection above. It then pushes riders onward and backwards past the Milky Way before another block break with a lighted tunnel. The train is then pushed into a half-length block at 11 seconds up the small lift hill that uses LSMs and will throw immediately into a helix before the return tunnel into the brake run. A projection dome onto glass of the Guardians greets us as we're moved to the unload station, safe back home on Terra. Cosmic Rewind is a fun and exciting change of direction for Epcot that officially opened on May 27, 2022. It's a long lines and has been received relatively well. If you had the chance to ride Cosmic Rewind, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And that's how it works. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for more deep dives like this. And if you like what we do, you can join our Patreon for early access and more. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the parks.